Hi everybody. I wanted to show you an example, an example of how we import OpenStax content into Pressbooks and then use the custom styles to fix some of the styling stuff that doesn't come over, uh, which then can apply to the rest of the book. So here I have an empty uh, chapter in my uh, Pressbooks test book here, and I'm going to go over to OpenStax and grab a, uh, a piece of a, a chapter here. So here's something from the chemistry book. And uh, let me grab something that can, can show you a couple things. All right. So I'm going to take like this paragraph and this figure and this example. So if I just control C with all that information here, and then over in the editor, control V, all of that stuff comes in uh, relatively well formatted. So I can save that. Um, and when I say relatively well formatted, I mean for example, that chemical formulas come in with their subscripts, which is big when you're trying to put together a chemistry book. Uh, the pictures come in without having to save as an image and then re-import later. The uh, captions come in, the examples come in, all this stuff comes in. So that makes it really fast and, and fairly easy to get this content over there. Where we have some issues here is um, for instance, in some of the formatting, so you can see the figure here kind of takes up the whole space. It isn't set in nicely the way the OpenStax was. The example is not in its own kind of grayed out box. Um, and you have some things like these titles get run right into the next part of the paragraph there. If I make this a little bigger, maybe you can see it. So the title here runs right into that next line of the paragraph. And that's really a readability issue, <coughs> excuse me, that we need to address. But even stuff like, um, and I'm really impressed by this, by the, the meta text on the image. So if we look, if you click over here on text, you can see the, the code that comes in behind it. And you see all of the HTML comes along with it, including the alt text, which is huge for accessibility. So um, that's really important, and we want to we wanna preserve that, which we wouldn't if we were just saving images and then putting them back in again. So let's play with the styles a little bit and see if we can get some of these things to change instead of having to go every single paragraph and fix every single thing in the whole book. Um, so right here, if I look at this section, so here's our title, empirical and molecular formulas, and then here's the text. Uh, you can see in the HTML here that this is given a data type of title, and this one is too, and this one is too, and they all will, anything that you bring in will be. If we go back over to the OpenStax book, you can see that when something is given that title of, um, sorry, I lost my spot here. G given that title or that class, uh, that data type of title, that gives it this special formatting that sets it apart from the rest of the line. So we can find out what that formatting is by right-clicking inspect on that. This is in Google Chrome. Has this nice inspect tool, and I can see precisely the different parts of the of the page and then I can see over here the styles that come along with them. Uh, so in this case I know this, this text is pretty small but in this case I don't know if I can, well, in this case you can see that the special styles for the data type of title are display block and font weight 700 and if you want to know what those things do you can just uncheck them and look for the changes here. So if I uncheck display block then we're, you can see it down here. This, then it's running right into the, the rest of the text. If I change the font weight, that's our, that's our bold face there. So you can see that um, working there. So what we're going to do is take these styles and copy them. Just control C, copy. And if we go back over to Pressbooks, over in Appearance, we can, in, we can add custom styles. So it's helpful to open this up in a separate tab or window so that you can edit it without, and then go back and forth. Uh, you can see the main styles here from the theme, um, but then you can also add your own styles here, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to control V, paste those styles that I brought in from OpenStax, and then we have to tell it what types of, of things to apply that, styles, that style to. So going back to our text here, you can see that um, where we want to apply that title is a paragraph P that is in a span of data type title. And the way we specify that in the custom styles 
is we say p span and then use brackets to indicate that we want the data type sorry data type to be title so span bracket data type equals title and bracket and then you have the curly braces to apply your uh, your style so we'll save that and then preview our book so I save the book I save or I'm saving the book and then I'm going to preview the book and now if we look at that we see that indeed these are set apart from the stuff underneath them now the bold part didn't come in here and um, I was trying to figure out why that is and it has something to do with the way that uh, Chrome is rendering this particular special font that's being loaded here uh, because if we take that font out and we just use whatever uh, default font then um, then we see it. I wonder if we can just take out that Laura. Yeah, so if we take out that Laura font, then the bold facing works. So there's something about that Laura font and the bold facing that's not um, that's not working nicely in there. So uh, that that's why that's not happening. All right. So let's let's do something similar with our whole example here. So if you remember back in in our um, OpenStax, our example is in this nice gray box. So let's say we want that in our Pressbooks book as well. We're going to use the same process. We're going to inspect that box. We notice here that it is a div of data type example. And the styles given there are, are some of these uh, here. So some margins, some padding, some border, some background color. Again, if you want to know what those do, you can just uh, deselect them and you'll see how it changes in the original uh, there. So we'll take that and copy it, bring it over to our custom styles, and this one's going to be a div of data type um, example. All right, forgot that was for a second. And then if we save that, And preview our book again. Okay, now we see that we have this nice gray box around our example. So that's a nice change. Um, you can see there's some formatting things here that you may want to fix. Uh, we can do all of that in the same way. So we can look at our example, we can see, okay, where is that, where is that space coming from? We look over here and we can see that in the um, in our data type of example right we have a header we have a section so uh, by by changing some by, by deciding by deciding what types of styles we want to have here um, we can change how that how that looks um, oh, I'm sorry, we're still looking at the same thing. So this is our example. I, I meant to be over in the open stacks. Let's try that again. Um, by looking at this particular box, we can see where some of those styles are, and then we can change things. So let's say we want to change some of those header styles. Those are in this class of OS title, uh, which is right here. So that gives us some of this um, spacing, like the margin top there. That's why there's is... Uh, a little bit more compressed so we can uh, have a class of an h3 os title let's try that so we'll take all of these styles here bring them over to our custom styles and we're going to call that h3 dot forgot what it was called again OS title and this one is not a um, is not a data type and I'm getting that right from the tag here that there's no data type it's just class equals OS title 
And in CSS, if you're just addressing a class, you just use a period. So our H3 OS title, anything with that third header style now should adopt these particular styles. And let's see if that happens. Okay, so it did, it got smaller. We removed some of that space. Um, we have the same thing over here for answer. So you'll notice the answer here is looking a little bit weird. Um, I'd, I'd kind of like it to look a little nicer in a separate box like we see here. So again, inspect there, and I see that the answer is a data type of note, a div data type note. So I'm going to take in those, um, those note styles here, which are, uh, there's a few of them here. Uh, I might have to copy them one at a time. You'll notice they're, they're in a couple different style, style sheets, so that's why some, some things are happening in different places here. Um, but uh, let's just take these for now and, and, and see what happens, and then we can, we can add the other ones if we need to. So I'll copy those. Um, and so this is going to be a um, div data type equals note. So then anything that ha is tagged with that data type of note is going to uh, apply those particular styles. And so there, we see that now. The answer is brought into its own nice little box, and we have a better, a better formatting. Uh, and we can play with some of those other styles too if we need to. Now obviously this is a lot of work for one little section, so if you just have one little section, it's probably easier to just edit it by hand and make it look the way you want it. But because in all of that editing, I never touched the actual text. I never even edited the, the HTML over here. All I edited was custom styles and it applied those styles to everything. So if you have a large book that takes a lot of content from um, OpenStax or really any other HTML source that has consistent formatting, you can apply those styles and use that to, uh, to set up your book really nicely for the rest of it. Um, so I hope that's helpful, and uh, let me know if there's other things that you want to see with, uh, with Pressbooks. Thanks.